In this video, I'm going to focus on how to correct or fix the duck-footed walk. You might have seen my video, the duck-footed walk exposed, and that is this walk here when the feet are angled outward. We call that the duck-footed walk or duck feet or walking with duck feet. Uh, it's basically a very common movement pattern that's really dysfunctional and people don't even realize when they're doing it and they don't realize that it is a major cause of pain and damage to the joints in the feet and the ankles and in the knees in particular. So in the previous video, the duck-footed walk exposed, I showed you examples of the duck-footed walk and how common it is, but I didn't describe how to fix it. If you watch videos online on YouTube about the duck-footed walk, you'll see that most people focus on strengthening or stretching muscles as a way to fix the problem. So generally the theory is that either the muscles that externally rotate your hip are too tight, so it just pulls your feet out, or the muscles that internally rotate your feet are too weak, so they are being opposed by the external rotators that cause your feet to point outwards. I don't think that is actually the case. I think the duck-footed walk is simply a pattern of movement that people adopt because it just suits their nature or suits the way they want to walk or suits their footwear, particularly flip-flops, as a major cause. I see people in the mall constantly if they're in flip-flops, there's probably a 70% chance that they're walking with duck feet. Because if you walk normally with flip-flops on, they will fly off your feet when you walk normally. So people adopt this short stride to keep the flip-flops from flying off the feet. That is not caused by uh, your muscles suddenly becoming too tight or uh, these muscles becoming too weak. It is a pattern of movement that people develop. So what you'll notice with the duck foot walk is that it's a very short stride, just like this, or I'll do it from the side, a short stride like this. It's a short stride because it is using your swing leg hip to walk through the whole step. So I am leaving this hip on the ground and I am lifting it and stepping forward all using my swing leg hip and then I use this hip to take the next step and so I'm constantly using the swing leg hip to walk and what I don't use is my standing leg hip to walk. When I take a normal stride the way we're supposed to move it's my standing leg hip that lifts the body forward. It's not my swing leg. My swing leg hip gets me to this position by flexing. I can go from here to here by flexing my swing leg hip, but the rest of the movement comes from my standing leg hip, which lifts my body forward to complete the step. That's when you see a normal stride. If I try to use my swing leg hip to walk forward to complete the step, what I'll get is this. You'll notice I don't actually continue moving forward no matter how high I flex this hip. It's not using the right core action to get me to go forward. I can flex the swing leg hip all I want and it will just come up to here. The only way I can move forward by continuing to flex the hip that is the swing leg hip is to change the beginning of the movement. So instead of stepping with my feet facing forward, if I step with my feet angled and I curve myself as I lift this hip, now as I change weight, I can step forward with my swing leg hip. And then I can curve this way and change weight and step forward here. So now I am able to use my swing leg hip to move me forward. But you notice how it has this body motion that goes along with it, that curving body motion. 
goes along with the turnout of the hips because it's actually being guided by the rotation of the core. My core is rotating this way to start the step. It should be rotating this way from my thoracic spine, but my lumbar spine and pelvis as I start a step should already be turning this way. That's how a normal walk starts and then it completes here. When I use the duck footed walk, I don't turn my lumbar spine towards my standing legs. I start to walk, which is the normal way. I have my lumbar spine and my thoracic spine all turning towards my back leg as I start the step. And then I complete the step by changing the lumbar spine over to this side, which then turns my pelvis and swings the leg forward. Then I reverse that and turn everything this way. And then I engage the lumbar spine to turn towards my right leg to complete the step. So I'm basically just doing an improper sequence of rotation of my waist in order to get this step to happen, which allows me to use my swing leg to drive the weight forward rather than using my standing leg to drive the weight forward. That also allows me to take very slow strides like this. And I already see a lot of couples in the mall walking hand in hand, both in flip flops, walking very slowly like this. So they didn't both suddenly develop too tight external rotators or too weak internal rotators. It's a pattern of movement that they developed together because they like strolling like that together. And that can be fixed just by, number one, being aware that it is a problem. Most people, almost all my patients, when I point out that they're doing that, they had no idea that they were even doing it or that it was a problem. And so once you realize it's a problem, you can start taking the corrective actions. Now, I'll tell you this, if you can't do this, if you can't turn your feet in and walk like that, then maybe your hip muscles are too tight or too weak, and then you can go to a therapist and get them strengthened. But if you're able to turn your feet in like this and walk, but you're normally walking like this, that means the problem isn't that your muscles are weak or your muscles are tight. It means you have an improper pattern of core movement that's leading to the problem. And that can be fixed just by practice and recognition that it's a problem. So go ahead and try to fix it. Watch my videos on how to move properly and you'll see how the core rotation is supposed to work to get that normal stride with the feet facing forward instead of this abnormal stride with the feet turned out. It's all about the proper movement of the core and you can fix that and then that's going to be great for your health down the road because it's going to prevent the early wear and tear of the inside of all of these joints that are the ones that tend to wear out the quickest and lead to knee replacement surgery and hip replacement surgery and plantar fasciitis and collapsing arches, all these medical problems that people think are genetic or just due to an injury. They're not. They're due to misfunction or dysfunction in the way we move and we can correct that. So please subscribe to this channel and Hopefully you will learn to move more fluidly, move more confidently, and in the end, move without pain. Thank you for watching.